How's it going Magpies? MagpyLeon here. In today's video we're going to be continuing our journey as to why I love the Halo series. Today's topic being Halo 4. Now I know what some of you are probably thinking if you've been keeping up with these videos. Obviously last time I did one of these we covered Halo 3. So obviously you'd assume the next one would be ODST. I'm currently in the process of replaying ODST to sort of give myself a refresh on the story and whatnot so I can cover that game properly. So for now, since I've played this one a bit more recently, I thought we'd cover Halo 4 today and then Halo 5 next and then we'll do ODST and Halo Reach at a later date. So yeah, today we're covering Halo 4. Now for those of you that haven't watched any of these videos yet, it's basically just going on about my personal opinions on these games and why I enjoy each Halo game in their own way. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. Halo 4 wasn't made by Bungie. I don't really need to say that. Most of you know that by now. But this wasn't something that bothered me when I was younger. I remember when the game was announced, I was really excited for it. At the time, I'd be playing Halo Reach custom games with my cousins. We'd play multiplayer now and again, but we mostly just played stuff like, you know, teacher, get out of my house, all that sort of stuff. And we were looking forward to Halo 4. And then the game came out, and I'll admit, I enjoyed it. Again, I was quite young when it came out, so a lot of the stuff didn't particularly bother me as much. It was just another Halo game, and I enjoyed it. Yes, it did have some stuff that I really hated when I was younger. For example, loadouts, sprint, uh, and the art style change, but we'll talk about the art style properly in a bit. And I didn't like some of these things when I was a kid. The, the whole loadout system, I remember I, I didn't like it, but I liked how it did some stuff that COD didn't. For example, you could actually just change your loadout in the middle of a match, and that was something that I appreciated being there. But since stuff like loadouts and ordnance felt like they were copying off COD, and I was always the Halo kid. I never really played COD as much. I was always the Halo, uh, seen as the Halo kid. I didn't like that. It felt like they were trying to copy off COD. It wasn't something that I was very happy with. But overall, I remember that when the game came out, I did enjoy it. I know I was pretty decent at the multiplayer. Uh, <laughs> I was like by no means any pro player, but I remember that I wasn't terrible at it, which was pretty neat. Now, as I mentioned, the biggest change for Halo 4 was easily its art style. And I've got to admit, I do not like the Halo 4 art style. In some cases, it's fine. Like, for example, I don't like how the elites themselves look, but I like some of the elite armors. I don't like uh, Chief's new armor as Chief's armor, but I think as an armor set, it's okay. It just doesn't look like Chief's armor, if that, if that makes sense. But again, like, I did like how the jackals looked, and I liked how... Not everything was completely changed. For example, most of the vehicles and weapons, they were just retextured. They, they were still, like, uh, most of them were the ones from Reach, just retextured. So not everything felt completely different. It was mostly just how the actual, uh, the armors looked and the actual, the Covenant themselves. Which, yeah, I've got to admit, I wasn't a huge fan of the art style change, but I do like some things about it. I think I wouldn't dislike Chief's armor as much as I do if it was where he'd acquired it through the game rather than just starting with it. But, you know, that's in the past. It is what it is. Nothing can be done about it. I'm just saying I, I wasn't a fan of the art style change. Another thing that obviously a lot of people were annoyed about was how drastically some multiplayer armors it had changed. EVA, Operator, like some of these like fan favorite armors just look completely different. Uh, and yeah, it was weird. Alongside that, 343 introduced uh, quite a few new features to the game. That obviously, uh, the prior mentioned loadout system, uh, ordnance, uh, they changed the way that uh, like certain armor abilities and weapons like were introduced. And they even introduced some new game modes like Spartan Ops. Again, we'll talk about some of this stuff in more depth later on. But for their first attempt at the Halo game, you know, I don't think it was half bad. They introduced a fair few new features while still staying true to Halo. Although it didn't visually look like prior Halo games, I'd argue that it still played like them. Now, let's just quickly talk about the multiplayer. So, obviously, Halo 4's multiplayer, I'll admit, still feels like a Halo multiplayer. They did change some stuff, which made it quite strange. For example, rather than winning matches based off kills, it was points, which didn't make a huge difference. It was just kind of odd that that's what, how they change it. Like, I don't know, it just didn't make that much sense. Uh, obviously, again, as I said prior, they introduced the loadouts and ordnance systems. Now, you could play modes without them, obviously, which were more enjoyable. 
uh, but that was something that they introduced that sort of changed the flow of the multiplayer. Now, I'd say Halo 4 is a very casual Halo multiplayer experience. It's not a very competitive one, but it still feels like Halo multiplayer. It's still very fun. I'll admit, I really enjoy Halo 4's multiplayer. When Master Chief Collection come out, Halo 4 would be the one I'd always try to get games on because I really enjoyed its multiplayer. And me not being someone that's super into competitive play, I like just being able to hop on for a casual match. So I like the sort of casual nature of Halo 4's multiplayer. 343 introduced a good few new maps. For example, Exile's one of my favourites. And some cool new modes. I liked Dominion. I liked being able to capture bases and then like it set up turrets and that's how you get your vehicles and stuff. I really enjoyed Dominion and sort of, I guess that might be why I like Warzone because Warzone felt like an evolved version of Dominion minus the microtransactions. We'll talk about Warzone when I get to Halo 5, but I liked Dominion. It was a cool new mode and I liked some of the stuff that they did introduce to the multiplayer. I, j overall, it just felt like sort of an evolution of Reach's multiplayer. I think a lot of the stuff that's in Halo 4 wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Reach. Again, something like Sprint, uh, like the loadouts. Although Reach, it wasn't where you could customise your loadouts, it still had loadouts, and I think if it didn't, Halo 4 probably wouldn't. Same with armour abilities and whatnot. They sort of just built on what Reach had introduced. So I can't fault them too much there. It was the first time making a Halo game, and they just sort of built up on what Reach had introduced. Now, something like Sprint, where when the game first came out, I hated, but now it really doesn't bother me. I mean, at the end of the day, I actually think Sprint was handled better in Halo 4 and 5 than it was in Reach. I think giving it to every player sort of made it a bit more balanced. For example, let's say in Reach, a couple of players would obviously choose Sprint and some other players might not. Well, those players with Sprint can just run away from a fight and you can't really do much about it unless you've got Sprint equipped. So I think everyone having it did make that feature a little more balanced. Now, one of the main new multiplayer modes for me was Flood. I know Flood is just infection, uh, but the way that 343 handled it, I think made it so much more enjoyable. Actually being able to play as a Flood infected Spartan, when it was announced, it was such a cool thing. Like, I, I was really hyped for it because I've always wanted the opportunity to play as the Flood. And being able to in this mode, I thought it was sick. And having that big blade arm and like make the hyena noise, like playing against them is terrifying. As you hear the sort of like the laughing the hyena noises, and then all of a sudden they just thrust around a corner towards you. It was absolutely terrifying, and I think that made it so enjoyable. And then playing against them, although cool, at the same time, I will admit the UI makes it very hard to see. And I, I guess that's sort of what they were going for, but I do think it makes it a little less enjoyable. But overall. I genuinely really enjoyed the infection mode in Halo 4. I think 343 did a great job, and I'll be honest, this might be a hot take right here, but I think 343 makes infection better than Bungie. Please don't kill me. Something that's obviously also heavily linked to the multiplayer is your customization. Halo 4 had a pretty solid customization. Yeah, it wasn't as in depth as Reach, but overall, it was pretty decent. It was pretty close in the amount of things that you could change to Reach. Obviously, Master Chief Collection has expanded upon it a little bit more as of now, but you did have a fair few options, and the way that you unlock this stuff, I thought was pretty fair. Now, for those of you that don't know to unlock armor in Halo 4, you basically just had to level up, so you just unlock stuff by playing the game, and that's something that I quite like. I didn't have to grind heavily for it or anything. I didn't have to grind like loads of matches to save up enough credits. You just had to level up, and you could unlock special sets by prestiging, and you can unlock variants of the armor by doing challenges and certain visors and weapon skins could be unlocked by doing challenges this was something that i personally quite liked and was very it was a very welcome addition in my opinion i didn't feel like i had to grind for it i could just enjoy the game although i wasn't a huge fan of most of the sets of armor i will admit there's some that i thought were quite cool uh, there's the one i can't remember what it's called it's like oceanic or something like that that looks like a like a diver's helmet i liked that one Warmaster is another really cool one. I liked the 343 version of Operator as its own army. I just don't like it as Operator. That's weird. And then they did add the DLC army. I don't actually remember these being added ever. Like, I do not recall this DLC being added. Maybe I'd stop playing the game or maybe I just never heard about it. Seeing these in Master Chief Collection, I will admit it's nice having the Mark V and ODST armor and like... The, uh, the Prefect armor. The, the only reason I knew that most of these armors existed originally was from Red vs. Blue. Like, I don't actually recall ever seeing them in-game. Obviously, that was because they were DLC, but I don't remember the DLC coming out. Yeah, I will admit, 4 had a pretty solid customization system, and I did quite like it. Yes, it wasn't as in-depth as Reach's, 
but it wasn't half bad either. Now, speaking of customization, you could play as your custom Spartan in a brand new mode they added. Spartan Ops. I like Spartan Ops. I'm one of the like three people in the world that actually enjoys Spartan Ops. I will admit, it does get repetitive. To explain, uh, to sum up Spartan Ops, it's basically firefight with a bit of story. <laughs> Like, you just fight waves of enemies, except you have, like, additional objectives thrown in there, like, go and fortify this area, go and save these marines. It's basically firefight with a story. But I do enjoy it. It did come at the cost of there being no firefight in Halo 4, but I do like Spartan Ops. I enjoyed sort of playing as Fireteam Crimson, and although it feels much more repetitive if you're playing it on your own, because you just constantly die, because it is designed for multiplayer, it's not designed for single player. Overall, I would say it's pretty solid, enjoyable mode. Uh, I, I am playing through it again at the minute, and I am enjoying my time with it. I do prefer playing it with other people, but I don't mind playing it on my own from time to time. Obviously, I'm someone that enjoys single player more than multiplayer, so it's nice to have another single player mode that I can just sit there and turn my brain off as I go through it. Uh, again, obviously, you can use your custom loadouts for this. I haven't really spoke about the custom loadouts too much, but again, you do, you'd unlock different armor abilities, uh, like perks and stuff like that, pretty standard stuff. You could unlock weapon skins and different weapons. The weapons you'd use would be your typical loadout ones. There's not too much to talk about there. I wasn't a huge fan of the loadout system and it's something that I kind of wish wasn't added, but I don't completely hate it. I kind of wish it was just something that was there for Spartan Ops rather than the regular multiplayer. Uh, and one last thing about Spartan Ops, please add it to matchmaking on Master Chief Collection so I can play it with other people. Thank you. They could literally just add it to the firefight queue. That would make it so much easier. One thing that 343 absolutely nailed was Halo 4's story. Halo 4 has an amazing story. It literally fits in perfectly with the, the, the Bungie era of games. Like, they did a great job. And although there is some things that personally I think could have been a little different, for example, the way the Prometheans were introduced, I don't think was quite as iconic as something as the Vlad. And obviously it wouldn't have been no matter what. But I think they were introduced a bit too quickly, for, for my, like in my opinion. Uh, but we'll talk about the Prometheans a little bit more in a second. Halo 4's story obviously opens up a couple years after Halo 3's Cortana Wake's Chief of Bad Slip Space. I don't need to go in depth. If you're watching this video, chances are you've already played the game. But I just want to say, like, I absolutely love Halo 4's story. I mean, I've gone on about, I, I really enjoy Halo 4. I think it's a very underappreciated game. Uh, as 343's first attempt, it is a great game and not even just as 343's first attempt just as a halo game it's a really enjoyable game halo 4's story as well it's just filled with iconic moments uh you know the ending with chief and Cortana, the introduction of the didact now one thing with the introduction of the didact i don't know whether or not this was intentional i'm going to assume it was but that it makes great use of something we call shape theory this is something i learned about studying games design uh and basically it's just how different shapes can mean different things a uh, square is usually sort of seen as something quite strong. A triangle, obviously, is something quite angular, can be seen as cunning and vicious. You could associate that with something like a jackal, how it's got these angular features. Uh, going back to the square, you could associate that with Chief being this strong, heroic character. And a circle is usually, you know, it's quite round, it's soft, it's usually something associated with safety. And this sort of plays into the didact introduction because you discover his Krypton. Now, at first, you're under the impression that the Krypton is obviously a communication device and is going to help you warn Infinity. You think it's something that's on your side until you then activate it and the didact is revealed. The didact is just such a cool character and was so underused. Again, that's not something I need to talk about too much because everyone probably knows it at this point he's a really cool character and he has quite pointy angular armor further playing into shape theory uh but enough about my nerdy game design stuff i just think his introduction was really cool not just from a cinematic perspective but from someone that studies games design i think it's a really impressive way to introduce the character uh, and obviously his faction the prometheans the prometheans looked cooler when they had the blue lights but Overall, I don't hate the Prometheans. I dislike them much more in Halo 5 than I do in Halo 4, but I remember when they were first revealed, I used to think the knights were really cool and I wanted to be able to use their sword. I'm still disappointed that never happened. That would have been amazing. But I think they were cool. Having like the skull inside of the helmets and everything, I don't know, I just, I thought they were cool. Uh, although I don't like them as much now, I used to like them a lot more when I first played the game than I do now. Uh, I do still have sort of an appreciation for them. I mean, 
you know, 343 were obviously going to introduce a new faction, so it wasn't just the Covenant or whatever. Uh, so, I can understand it, and I don't hate the Prometheans. I also like the way that the Promethean weapons were introduced. Every time you pick up a new one, it would sort of assemble itself in your hand, which, again, I thought was really cool. Now, one thing I, I will admit that's a little weird, obviously, the Prometheans, when you first see them, they have the blue light, but when you pick up the weapons, it's just the orange light anyway. I kind of wish that it was the blue light beforehand. And then they could have probably done a weapon skin for the multiplayer, where it fires blue light instead of orange, which I think would have been cool, but again, it's in the past... You know, it, it is what it is. One thing as well that helps make Halo 4's story so good is its music. Halo 4, I actually only recently realised how good Halo 4's soundtrack is. Now, it isn't, uh, like, the same as the prior games. Its music doesn't have the same approach. It's very different instrumentally and sort of just in the way that it sounds and everything. It is very different, but that doesn't mean that it's bad. Uh, songs like... Haven, Arrival, Green and Blue, like it has some amazing soundtracks. My personal favourite from the game is 117. I think this captures the heroism of Chief. Uh, it's just such a really good song and one that I'd love to see come back in Infinite. Green and Blue, obviously, you know, it, it helps make that moment with Chief and Corton is so iconic because it's such a sad song, but it's such a good piece of music. Uh, something like Arrival, I think that, that part on the final level where you like find through all the Prometheans, again, it's a really good song. Uh, and then like another thing that made 117 such a good song, that the moment that you hear it, it's where you're yeah, flying that ship through the uh, the composer and it straight up feels like Star Wars, it feels like um, when Luke's flying through the Death Star and you've got this really epic music playing in the background as you're flying through destroying all these Promethean turrets. That it has to be one of my favourite moments in not just Halo 4, but in a Halo game ever. Because it's just so cool and I'd love to see more stuff like that in Infinite. More, more space battles, more flying around on a spaceship, fighting things. In that would be sick. Please. <laughs> Halo 4 just has some great moments, some great music, a pretty solid multiplayer. Yeah, it's not as competitive. Uh, it is a bit more of a casual experience, but it's still really enjoyable. And overall, I love Halo 4. I think it's a great game. Uh, I'm saying I love Halo 4 now, you already know that but from the title, but I do really love this game and I really enjoy it and I've had my fair share of memories and fun with it. One thing obviously I mentioned was that at the time when the game was coming, announced and about to release, I played custom games on Reach of My Cousins and we still did in Halo 4 because again, Halo 4 had a pretty solid Forge mode and pretty solid custom games, pretty much on par with Reach's, it just didn't have Forge World which was a shame. but. It still had a really enjoyable custom game and Forge experience. And as I said, I think Halo 4 is a really underappreciated, really enjoyable game. And if for some reason you haven't played it, go check it out. Anyway, that's all from me today, folks. Join me next time while we cover Halo 5. I'll probably release a couple of videos in the meantime, but that is the next Halo game I'll be um, simping for. Anyway, folks, that's all from me today, and I'll catch you in the next one.